Okay, so I yeah, I got a notification that I had a package, and I um, I had a bit of a snafu this week because I I pre-ordered the Best Buy was giving me ten dollars off, right? And mm -hmm. they said for Cyberpunk 2077 for PC, we're gonna ship you in the real mail a piece of cardboard with a code for it to redeem on GOG Galaxy, but it's ten dollars cheaper. And you get a steelbook case for free. Ooh. And I was like, Ooh. oh, that's tempting, yeah. And yeah. I did that, and of course, on Thursday, I did get a message saying, no, not coming. <laughs> it'll, it'll be there It'll be there eventually. We don't know where it is. Um, oh, my. They don't know so, where the bit of cardboard with your code is. <laughs> no, and just email it to me. Honestly. I'm right here. <laughs> um, that, that makes too much sense. And so I went ahead and I just bought it on Steam and I like talked to Best Buy and they're like, yeah, you can just return it as long as you don't scratch the code off. And I was like, fine, yeah, I'll just play it. I'll just you know buy it, whatever. Um, and I still haven't gotten it, but I was out there um, looking because I got something in the mail. I thought it might be the Steelbooks. Uh, I got like a notification and uh, I got a very nice like varnished wood like water bottle with my name etched into it. I, oh. I did not order. Uh, there is no note inside. <laughs> so you you have got a secret admirer slash stalker. This is a, this is a nice yeah. development. This is character development. I'm thinking the secret admirer is more than likely my mother. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, Does she always send cryptic gifts like this? Hold on. I'm going to just check the box again real quickly. I just love that she hasn't included any note and presumably didn't yeah. give you a heads up about this. Is this... I like that chaotic just, just make energy. Sure you, yeah, wash it thoroughly just in case. <laughs> you you never know. You know, it might be Hojo. He might be doing no. to try and, you know, do an experiment on you. No, Hojo, he creeped me out more than Sephiroth, I think. Like I know He's him. Supposed to. Yeah. yeah. This is like a nice this is like a nice water bottle. It is from swell.com. Ooh. Um, take 20% off your next purchase with this coupon code. We'll include that in the podcast notes. Nice. Um, okay, so you can you can now intimidate someone else by um, giving them a bottle with their name I in guess. it. Yes. I, yeah. I need to find out who gave this to me. I don't like this. Um, <laughs> usually, well, usually if, you know, usually if you don't give someone a heads up, you're getting them something then and, and then it's something you know, like you would put a note inside the box or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is a thing that says like uh, gift from, but it's not filled out. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's even better. I love this. No, that's their name. Yeah. It's 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 a blank space. It makes life very awkward for them. Please don't make fun of them. <laughs> How insensitive. Okay, well, I've, I've got it sitting on my desk here. Um, I guess I'll just kind of look at it while we do this. All um, right, so you're going to anyway, sound anyway, terrified for the whole podcast. You. Yeah, I'm uh, slightly worried. It's okay. Um... So, anyway, welcome to Game Busters. This is a podcast from GameBuster.com. Uh, I'm Nirav, and I'm your host, and as always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Ree. Howdy, and I also just want to use this chance to apologize for the fact that my PS4 fan is probably audible. Um, I'm downloading Cyberpunk, so yeah, have fun with that. Wow, it's still downloading, huh, from two days ago? <laughs> I actually just got it today. I was in the same boat as you. Just uh, like, oh, uh, just somewhere. Okay. Nice. Um, okay, and we have our special guest Tim from Game Monster. Liberty, fatali, Sephiroth. My my knowledge of Final Fantasy VII ends there with Sephiroth. Hey, I mean, that's you, a good place for it to end. You, yeah, you told the whole story of it in that one video <laughs> we did, and you talked about the that's pizza true. company and. I, the problem the is like the thing I'm the thing I'm remembering is the pizza company stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have forgotten the real thing. <laughs> I mean, they did make the rotting pizza, you know. Um, the okay, Mc, okay, I'll, I'll I'll get into it. We'll we'll I'll, I will I'll piece it together as we go. All right. Um. Okay. Uh. So let me pop open the outline here. Um. I guess we'll kick off with the uh, the Hall of Fame luster. Um. Which I just remembered we were doing. Um, <laughs> what I'll have to do, I suppose, is use somebody uh, who I can think of in the next 10 seconds. This uh, is what you get for having the bottle in front of you. It's intimidating you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put it... I, 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 and then... I don't know, man. I've, I've got a problem with, like, the bottle. Um, do not stare directly at the bottle. 
I, I keep thinking maybe the answers are there at the bottom of the bottle, but they never are. <laughs> no, they, they never really are. Um, There's a great Iron Man arc about that. Okay, so um, let's let's uh, go ahead and get into it. Ree, why don't you kick us off? Um, today our Hall of Fame luster par- or entrant uh, is uh, the char- a character with the largest but still like practically usable sword. Okay, so I'm very annoyed with Sephiroth always being the one for you know the iconic ridiculous sword character. When um, my boy Nightmare from the Soul Calibur series um, has literally a gigantic sword, I think about the same size as him. And bear in mind, he's like seven foot tall or something. And also, it has an eyeball in it um, that doesn't. I don't know. I just it doesn't really serve a purpose. It's just moving about. Um, no, no. But that, it's so the sword can see. Yeah, it's, the sword is alive and a horrible creature. It, it is, um, and it's and it's a large boy. Um, I you know look it up. It's a big boy, um, and I would say it's practical in the sense that he manages to at least swing it around. But also, I guess having a sword of an eye could come in handy in a practical sense. Um, you could see further up, like if you were like at a concert and everyone's like taller than you, <laughs> you could just hold it up in the air. You'd be very unpopular, but you could do that. Like, you know, generally speaking. So, yeah, I went with that. Okay, nice. Um, let's see, what, what was the name again? Uh, it's, uh, Nightmare, that's it. Nightmare. Nightmare, yeah. With the Nightmare. Soul Edge. Okay. All right, Tim, who'd you, who'd you bring? Uh, so, the character I brought was Low Gear from the uh, Gundam and Super Robot Wars uh, Astray uh, spin-offs, uh, and his sword, which he wields in his giant robot, but it's giant. His giant robot's sword is mm, the okay. Gerbera Straight One fi- or the One Fifty Gerbera Straight, and the One Fifty refers to its length because it is one hundred and fifty meters long. Oh, is that practical? It, it is for him. It's actually he uses it several times to cut uh, capital ships in half. Mm. Okay. Uh, he, um, he wielded it from a single block of space metal, just because he could. Space metal. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, when you can, why would you not? Exactly. That's that's a lot of Low Gear's life philosophy. <laughs> um, okay. Well, uh, I have arrived at um, not uh, uh, the best I can do uh, on such short notice for myself. Um, is, <laughs> and you're the one uh, who said the, the fame lost. It was so late. I was playing Cyberpunk so late. Fair enough. Um, I mean, I was playing Teardown last night, and that that's a time sink where you don't realize it. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so who I've landed on, and I, I knew there was something. I'm on the wiki right now, and I, I think I can defend this. Is um, Zabuza from Naruto? Um, if you haven't seen him before, just Google Zabuza. Um, he is. He has a frankly gigantic sword. The trick of this is that the power of the sword. The sword's name is Kubi Kiribocho, um, and the power of it is that when it kills people, it absorbs the iron from their blood and dis- and pushes that iron back into uh, his body and makes oh. him stronger so that he can continue wielding it. Oh boy, I'm looking um, at it now, and that is interesting. It is a big sword. Yeah. Um, that that hook there at the end yeah. that's made for specifically for decapitation. Oh, because yeah, um, I, guess I, rem- the sword I remember wasn't that sharp guy. Enough for that. Yeah, I guess yeah. you know you've got. He is have- one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Uh, so he's one of the best swordsmen in the world, and he is uh, extremely quick with it because of its uh, properties and you know stealing iron. Um, so I I think that that's a pretty good one. I think it is still practical for him, if not other people. I mean, yeah, it it, it does a lot. It's very. Um... You know, it. I can't. I, my brain's too fried to even. I'm. I'm just wrapping my head. See, other this. other people try to wield this blade, and they are weighed down because it's bigger than them. But uh, he he seems <laughs> but, to be okay. It's Sorry, versatile. The wiki, apart from handling that. it very skillfully, Zabuza could throw it spinning at several enemies with enough power to lodge itself into a hard tree trunk. Well, he's just taking the piss at that point. I mean, how much oh, yeah. does he want from his sword? This is insane. Um, his water bending powers apparently also help strengthen him to hold oh, the sword. Oh, of course, so OP. Yeah, he's a little. Well, he is one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. They're yeah. all a little OP. Also, he's uh, so not OP comparatively to the power level uh, of the rest of Naruto. Yeah, just the rest of the cast of Naruto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
And uh, of course, from the from the video game Naruto Clash of the Ninja Two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the best video game. <laughs> um, I mean, still, if, still, if I, still, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say if 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 we were gonna disqualify, you know, originally from something else beside a video game, I did have a purely video game example that was almost, actually even oh, more. Oh, go ahead and toss controller. it out just for, for right. reference. Sengar Zanvolt from Super Robot War. He has a shape shifting sword. I don't know either of those things. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that he can make, so he's got a 55 meter tall mech that can make, he can make as big as at least four times bigger than his robot or shrink it down so that he can wield it on foot. Oh my god. Well, that is practical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get voting. Uh, so you, everyone has two votes, uh, and please keep in mind Axel's Law. All right, so <laughs> Re, go ahead. Um, Zapisa definitely because I'm still wrapping my head around that one. Um, Gundam as well, um, just because of the sheer size of it. It's so over the top. I love it. Oh yeah, it's also a, proportionally I think the biggest sword because the 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 robot that wields it is less than twenty meters tall. So it's grabbing a sword <laughs> oh, wow. that's a ten, almost you know uh, eight times bigger than it. Can we get okay, him in that Smash? is pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Wow. I'm. Yeah, Tim. Where are your votes going? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give one to Nightmare just because, um, there is a lot okay. of practicality in Soul Edge. Um, it makes you immortal. Um, granted, it, it horribly corrupts you, but you're immortal. Um, yeah. So. That sounds uh, like Voldemort. Yeah, a bit. And and the the 150 Gerbera from Gundam. Okay. I just love the sheer, you know, awe. The, it is Gar, if you are familiar with that term. Um, I'm, I'm not. If not, but... no, can, it's, it's a mecha fandom joke, so. Okay, okay. Um, and then I was going to give, I'll give one to, to myself for Zabza. I think that was good for pulling it out of my ass at the yeah. last second. <laughs> and then that. I will give one to Gundam, though. Yes. Uh, what was the name of the specific robot? Uh, the... Gundam Astray Red Frame, powered red with the 150 Gerbera straight. I'm just I will ta- call him Gundam. Yeah, I'm gonna Does type have that a all down for you. <laughs> all right. Um, I know, I know of Gundam, but I have unfortunately not uh, gotten into it. Um, but uh, I've also not ever really historically been a mech person. God, that is that's just, uh, why does it even name that long? Hell? Well, also, how is this gonna the, fit? In, how is this gonna fit? A stray is the, the type. Red frame was the model. Powered red is the variant, and one fifty Gerbera straight is the sword. You know I what like, I like? I like. Okay, my one of my favorite animes is Code Geass, which is another mech anime. Yep. But in that one, you, you the mean names are just four. like Nightmare Mark Four, yeah. <laughs> Nightmare Mark Three, Nightmare Mark Two, and Mo- I'm like, yes. This, a, this a, lot right. of, a lot of Gundam does follow that. Uh, Logear just likes to get colorful with his titles. Because okay. he's the one who designs his own mechs. So am I right in thinking the okay. Hall of Fame luster is still on the moon? Because we're definitely yeah. going to need that I, I mean, a Gundam will definitely be fine on the moon. I'm oh, not yeah, no, worried they, about they build, they build them on the moon. It'll be fine. They do? Oh, fine. Yeah. Perfect. Maybe then. we have a Gundam manufacturing <laughs> facility nearby. Yeah, just oh, see if it, you've got Anaheim Why not? What would be the zoning for that? Probably <laughs> well, industrial, right? I mean, right? We, yeah. we, already, we already just bought the moon off Elon Musk, so I wouldn't be surprised if he left <laughs> oh, that yeah, behind. I, I'm sorry, we should have opened with that. Yeah, we the, the deal with Elon Musk did go through. We are we do own a small section of the moon. Um, mm. uh, when I say small, it's like, you know, several hundred square miles, but uh, it's, it's still... Uh, the problem is that um, as we're building, the ground is kind of shaking a little bit because the moon is hollow. Um, well, it's, is so it about to hatch? Is that the thing? Or is it... We're worried that it might be hatching. We're okay. also worried that there might be an army of Nazi scientists in there. Oh, if um, it's an army of Nazi scientists, then Majora will kill them. This is a real theory, by the way, if anyone's not aware. This, oh, yeah. There's no. a real group of people that believe there is a giant group of Nazi scientists that retreated to the hollow moon and are yes. still like, there creating I'm sorry, weapons there's the documentary the Iron Sky. No. <laughs> there's isn't there enough Nazis on Earth? Why would they have why would they go to the effort? <laughs> well, I don't to need them the on moon? another planet too. Yeah, like because, they don't have those... to hide on another planet. They they're fine here. They get on fine. They're actually here. doing really well here, unfortunately. They're thriving, you know? They're, why would they go to the effort to hollow out the moon and chill there for a bit, you know? 
I mean, the I theory like a lot came people... about like right after World War II. It's been around a long time. Yeah. I, I love the the idea, though, like, when people are like, oh, would, like, Hitler's still alive. Like, they didn't find his real body in that bunker. I'm like, even if they didn't, he would definitely be dead by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen, oh, what's what's it called? Um, there's this great, I want to say New Zealand comedy um, where, like, Flight every of the epi- Concords. No, <laughs> yes, where every episode they try to kill Hitler. Flight of the Concords. But no, um, <laughs> I watched that. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll, I'll remember the name later. We can put it in the notes, or, or I'll remember it. But like every episode is a plan to kill Hitler, and then in the second season, it's in the eighties, and they have to deal with Hitler's time travel shenanigans. <laughs> That's not a sentence I thought I'd hear today. Uh, at one point, uh, Hitler goes to a high school and becomes Johnny Hitler. <laughs> it's Johnny it's so- Hitler is something. It's not nothing. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's uh let's get out of here and let's get Danger into Danger 5 is the name of the the series. Danger 5. Okay. Like the Jackson 5. Yes. All right. Uh welcome everybody to Bustums uh for Final Fantasy 7 uh we're talking about today. So uh Rhea, I think you you were taking over for this one and I I'm not 100%. Uh, uh, this is my one of my gamer confessions. Um I don't know a ton about Final Fantasy VII. I have not played the original, uh, nor have I played the the remake. I was actually out looking for the remake yesterday. Nobody had it. I, I, I guess I thought it was really? a game that would exist in places I could buy it. <laughs> the problem is that um, everybody has had that exact same thought like a minute before you. Right. The problem. Well, th- again, my interest in Final Fantasy VII skyrocketed when Sephiroth appeared in Smash Bros. And so I was like, let me just go grab that remake and i think everyone else also did that <laughs> yeah um, no i i would not be surprised if i hadn't grabbed it you know months and months ago i might have done it I, too i do have 15 dollars in credit at gamestop though so i will i will and it expires today so i'm trying to I'm trying to get out there yeah um put it all on ff7r yeah um so anyway i don't know a ton about this game um except for the video that we did where um you should watch on youtube where uh uh, re put together a helpful slideshow and i had to guess the problem is again like i have i i think of final fantasy 7 i'm like pizza samurai pizza cats what's going on <laughs> <laughs> like i mean you're technically not wrong <laughs> i keep thinking of the big tiger and i'm like was that the samurai pizza cat <laughs> no they're all the okay. samurai pizza cats uh, i feel like i might actually know less about it than i did before we did that yeah, video. You're, you, you definitely knew way more when we did the video yeah, I feel like um, I, I feel like I rotted your memories of it when we did that video. It like you learn less as I was explaining it to you. I think that it may be possible, but anyway, yeah, re, uh, please take it away. I'll I'll be over here with the zinger every now and then, <laughs> and I'll be here with like ridiculous yeah, details. T- Tim is very. Uh, th- this is yeah. I think this is his shick. So yeah. Oh we, yeah. We, the, the joke is that we're self proclaimed experts. I am self proclaiming expertise. Definitively in Final Didn't Fantasy say, VII. Definitive, did you say <laughs> two decades edition. of experience? Yeah. Did you did you say two decades of experience with this game, Tim? Two, uh, I have two decades getting into the weird nitty gritty and arguing with people online. Nice. And only fifty percent of that is LTD. So uh, okay. So um, to make you mad, uh, my experience goes back to March. Um, but in that time, <laughs> um, but. In that time, in all seriousness, I have absolutely fallen in love with this game. Um, I found it at the perfect time, I think, um, with the world ap- like literally falling apart. Um, yeah, no, that's a great place to, to play a dystopian game. It was, and it really, it really like meant a lot to me and everything. Um, so I'm super excited to an episode of it. But anyway, first before we go into how like fucking great that game is, we are just gonna do a brief bit about the development and tim you can interject if i miss yep. something out because i probably am because I'm a, I'm a i'm a zoomer basically um i li- like th- i have no expectations that you know like 50 percent of the random bullshit that i've done a deep dive into <laughs> so yeah well, and this is not judgment this is the you know this this is me going hey i know this thing would you like to know it <laughs> no that's, okay let's start so yeah we all know final fantasy has been a series since 1987 but for some reason, uh, Seven is the game that everyone knows about. Um, its its impact is is insane. Um, 
so curiously, um, obviously well known for its juicy PS1 graphics um, and cutscenes, it was actually originally on in development um, on the Super Nintendo and was first planned in 1994. At that point, that was just the planning stage of yes. uh, looking at what the game would look like. It was put on hold for a bit and then brought back in 1995, in which case they did change a bit. Um, a lot, actually. Yeah, a bit. I'll or- get originally, into that. the game... The, the first iteration of the game that we know about took place in New York City on Earth yeah. and starred a guy <laughs> named Joe hunting down criminals with his partner Joe. Yeah, this is the part of going... the game developed. Joe, that I... Oh, Joe, Joe. Joe, Joe's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was going to end with them blowing up the city. So yes. blowing up that... New York, which would have <sighs> aged amazingly. Um, wow. So, um, I, I do want to give a shout out quickly to another game that made such a leap. I do remember that the original, they made like even a demo for this. The original Super Mario Sunshine had Mario in like the countryside of Japan training to become a master ninja. Oh my lord. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't we get that? <laughs> okay. So, but no, then- so um, this is the part of the game that I like to call pre Parasite Eve. Cause, oh yes, pre, yes, exactly that. Yeah, yeah like um, because, not all of the details, but like ninety percent of the details about what this is are like okay. Let's take all that Joe stuff and a little bit of that Genova stuff. Oh, and we've got this license for for this novel series that we're not doing anything else with. I don't know why we got it. Let's slap it on this game. Boom, bada bing. Also, so, we'll have Star- Cloud Star in it again, and we'll change his name and make him a lady. <laughs> So, um, but before we get to the Parasite Eve bit, um, they did make the decision to move to PlayStation when they realised that the scope of what they were trying to pull off um, needed the side of a CD-ROM. They were considering the Nintendo 64 as well, but it just wouldn't pull off the graphics that they wanted to to do. Um, uh, Specifically, they didn't have the the storage for the graphics they wanted to do. Mm. So, um, Seven um, is insanely innovative for the series, using 3D animation for the first time in both cutscenes and gameplay. Um, if you, I mean, just look up Final Fantasy VI right now. The difference is night and day. It's insane. Um, but most importantly, Seven made the massive leap from taking the series from medieval fantasy to this dystopian sci-fi setting. Um, the art director of the game, um, you'll probably know this name better than me, Tim. Uh, Yusuke Nawara. Yeah, we go. Um, calls it dark and weird, and I think that is the perfect way to sum it up. Um, at the time, yeah. it was the most expensive game ever made, which is really easy to understand when you consider how long it was in development and the fact that they were working with completely new tech from what they'd worked on before. Um, so overall, it took a lot for it to become the game that we know today, and it's just crazy to think that it could have been so much different. Oh, yeah. Uh, Uh, Even after they had um, switched from the New York setting to what we more readily recognize, there was a period where the main character was essentially Zack and not Cloud. A period where... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, If anything changed on that, my cat just fell asleep on the uh, keyboard. Uh, There was a period where there was no difference between Tifa and Aerith, and they were a character that I think was named Tifereth. Uh, and that character <laughs> that was related name. to the character who uh, looked Wait, like Wait, so my Vincent. Tifereth ship was a real character? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. They used to be uh, one character before being split off into two. And they were, uh, at one point, both siblings to, and then at another point, lovers to the character uh, we know as Sephiroth, but who looked like Vincent at the time. Yeah, it was a wild one. Um, and obviously, yeah, like Aerith and Sephiroth. Oh, and Barrett was siblings. called Bro. So, yeah, Aerith and, <laughs> yeah, Aerith and um, Sephiroth were meant to be siblings, which is why yep. Aerith sort of has remnants of Sephiroth hair. With the, and the why, and why Vin- Tifa and Vincent are also so visually similar, because at that mm-hmm. stage in development, those were the two character designs that were Tifereth and Sephiroth. Well, that is wow. Um, yeah, there was <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot changing. They moved characters around all the time. Like love interests were changed. Um, characters were dropped. Like Vincent and uh, Yuffie uh, were meant Yuffie. to have 
Yuffie, Yuffie, were meant to have um, much bigger roles in the main plot, but that was dropped because they were like, we've been working on this game for too long already. Yeah. Um, but anyway, as for the story that we actually got, um, I'm sure most of you know, but to refresh the house poor memory of this game, um, you you play as Cloud or whatever you name your character, um, and he joins... Sugar Daddy. Eco- <laughs> he you joins- can rename your character? Yeah, it was one yeah, of the, the, the last ones. Them. Uh, where everybody could be renamed. Um, Because in Ah. 8, you could rename some people, uh, and in 9, you could rename them, and then then in 10, it was just uh, Titus and Yuna, and then they dropped it. So, um, what was... Okay, I'm getting lost. Okay, yeah, so... You join the eco-terrorist organization Avalanche. Um, the cloud is joined by Barrett and Tifa as they live in the forgotten slums of Midgar, um, fighting against the tyrannical Shinra Corporation, who are destroying the planet for profit, essentially by uh, mining the planet for its life source. Um, for its very with- life blood. Yeah, for its life, like it's so they are life. quite lit. They are quite literally killing the planet for profit. Yeah. Um, so everything changes when um, Cloud and and the gang are ambushed by Shinra, and Cloud crosses paths with, myster- with the mysterious Aerith or Eris. If you played it originally on the PS One over here, um, I played it originally on the PS One, and it's still Aerith. Oh, <laughs> um, wait. No, well, so uh, it, it, due to the translation, it was originally um, yeah, Eris came out yeah. as Eris. But it is supposed to be Aerith, and there's actually a hilarious bit about how her default name in the game that you never actually see before it loads into the suggested name for the character in that rename screen is actually Aerith. Oh. Uh, and then it's, yeah, it's it's a very silly thing, because um, actually in the, the demo disc for it, she's still Aerith. Uh, yeah, but anyways. so that's yeah, the translation. <laughs> the the Aerith Aerith debate was one of the most hotly and still to this day is a little hot and heated debates in the FF7 fandom. It's, a, it's such a daft debate because it's like they've already confirmed it's Aerith. It's been yeah. Aerith in everything since, as far as yeah. I know. And uh, Kingdom Hearts, and obviously now in Remake, you can't yeah, really the, argue with it anymore. Literally, the only other game where it's not Aerith is the original. Final Fantasy Tactics, and that game has translation problems of its own. Exactly, I love it, so- but kill Dysodark's elder brother. Dysodark is the eldest brother, and you are <laughs> killing him. I just want to but- interject. I'm sorry. I did solve the water bottle mystery. I just texted all Ooh, of my friends. That's um, exciting. It, 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 was, it was one of my friends who sent me it as a Christmas gift, ah. so it was Aww, not a mysterious wholesome. stalker. Very wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Shout out to Grace. Thank you. I <laughs> Um, all right, where was I? Okay, yeah, so Aerith slash Eris. Um, uh, Shinra is very interested in capturing her for some reason um, after Cloud meets her. So they all escape Midgar um, with them on their tails. After escaping Midgar, the rest of the game sees the heroes attempt to halt the plans to destroy the planet while taking down the extremely violent and unhinged Sephiroth who taunts Cloud over a past he has forgotten. Or he sort of can or he misremembers it it's a mess um and it becomes clearer if you play it <laughs> yeah. basically it's yeah. deliberately a mess because it's Cloud deliberately a mess deliberately a yeah. mess himself he is but, yeah. um he also is a messy one thing boy. to note is that sephiroth also wants to destroy the planet oh yeah of course yeah, yeah. of course he does um <laughs> so Se- well Se- sephiroth is also his mother is a robot right oh no, no. his I remember that. mother his, is his, a his, god his, his, his mother what? is a, a scientist who was injected with the cells of an alien god while he was still in the womb. What yeah. is the thing he keeps calling mother? Is that that is Genova? That is the alien creature who gave him like ninety percent of his powers. Okay. Yeah, so he's a normal boy. Um, you know, he's sorry. That's a normal boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, so that's that's the plot. Um, and. From what we've seen in discussions over the years, this is generally regarded as the best Final Fantasy, but then some hardcore Final Fantasy fans do say that they think it is a tad overrated. Um, Those tend to be six or eight fans. Yes, I I specifically heard a lot of eight fans decrying this one. Six, seven, and eight are the weirdly contentious trio. Like, everybody likes all the others, and they're fine with... If you've got a favorite that's not six, seven, or eight... 
people will leave you alone. But if you have <laughs> a favorite that is six, seven, or eight, fans of the other two of those are very likely to say, yeah, well, but this one. Oh, I'm so glad I don't get involved in fandoms. I think that's... <laughs> so I, I, I can, I can draw some comparison to that because I think that also happens with... Zelda, if <coughs> if your favorite is either Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, the fans yes. of the other one will come out in droves to fight oh you. But if it's really one of the God. other ones, they'll leave you alone. Oh, I, yeah, thought, I, sure. I, I had always thought that the split there was Ocarina Twilight. With everybody just the twi- going no, the Majora. Twilight, the Twilight Princess people are over there in the corner like, this is so underrated. And everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, that's fine. You know, they'll, yeah. they'll leave you alone, even yeah. if they disagree. But the... Like, the Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time people are, like, locked in combat for the fate of the Earth every 10,000 years. That is so weird, because I, I, I literally just see Majora as Ocarina the second time around. They took it, they improved it. Ocarina it's, yeah, is still this... amazing. You wouldn't have Majora without Ocarina. Yeah, it, absolutely. I 100% agree with you that a lot of people are like, oh, this is, this is so stupid. Ocarina of Time was the best game ever made, and so everything yeah. else after it is bad. It's, and I'm like, it's... It's just come on. I think it's, it gets like that because we're dealing with games here that are generally regarded as like some of the greatest games of all time. So then I feel like right. when you like one of them, you're sort of yeah. just like seen as like this anti-intellectual who doesn't. And put honestly, much the I think the only favorites. game that is like probably as widely beloved as Final Fantasy VII is probably Ocarina of Time in like yeah. the same nostalgic fashion. Yeah, definitely, so, to- totally. It's like it um, is. It is. By the way, exactly Nintendo, like that. please do the remake. Just could do the, just do it. <laughs> like, look, Square did it with the Final Fantasy VII. They did. It was VII, so good. Just do and it. And it was amazing. Please. Anyway, yeah. You just so use the Breath of the just... Wild engine. Let us climb all. Literally, over the game. just actually, that would be fine. Just whatever. Ah, <laughs> all right. Anyway, continue. So, um, so I played Final Fantasy VII, like I said, this year for the first time, um, and I loved it to absolute pieces. Um, I was coming off the back of hearing a lot of, um, because I follow a few people in the Final Fantasy community on Twitter, um, I was a massive fan of Final Fantasy X, not so much X-2, um, but people were saying like, oh, Seven isn't even that good, it's just like gamer bros like it. Um, but honestly, it was amazing. It was extremely relevant to 2020, um, when you feel like the world's falling apart. Um, I I was saying to this earlier to Tim, I just love how so many people can play it and come away with completely different, like, interpretations of everything and, or or it means something else to them or they got attached to a particular character. I got really attached to Aerith because I I really related to her um for, throughout the bit of the game she's actually fucking in <laughs> um i loved it to pieces um so you too yeah. had a mercenary boyfriend who vanished in mysterious circumstances five years ago and a guy who looks nothing like him but acts suspiciously like him has recently shown up in your life i mean if you i suppose getting dumped during the pandemic <laughs> no, I, it's weird because it's not that? even that bad of a description of what you're doing <laughs> no it's, like it's not it's not far enough off for me to not be uncomfortable about it <laughs> Yeah, I still guess um only reason I related it is because I'd just gone through a breakup like during the pandemic, so it sucked. Mm. Um so um I pl- I like comfort played Final Fantasy Seven, really related to Aerith. I think that's why I'm a massive like Aerith and Cloud fan, because I just like this idea of finding someone else. And then um not to be too cheesy, but I did, so I really related to it even more. Um yeah, I but then like I hear people talk about how much Tifa means to them, how much Barrett means to them, and his relationship with his daughter. Um and I really like that aspect of the game oh, as yeah. well, actually. Bar- Barrett um, is a great dad and they 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 do him a, a good solid in the remake. Oh do uh, they? Oh I'm so happy to hear yeah. that. He uh, out of all of the characters, um I mean everybody gets, you know, a glow up uh presentation wise because they can focus so much more on them in the Midgar area in the remake. But yeah, I think he, especially because he's got voice acting now and his voice actor knocks it out of the part, you can tell that while this is a man who is full of rage, it is not anger, it is passion. And he believes. Yes, that's exactly the sort of vibe I got from Barrett. I know we all sort of laugh and his dialogue can be funny sometimes, but he he isn't angry for no reason. He has got a lot of reason to be angry. But... um. (laughs) I was actually interested in like where Final Fantasy VII rates for you, Tim, because I know that you have a long and expansive history with this series. Yes. No, uh, I, I've played all of them since uh, Final Fantasy, though Final Fantasy II US was the first one I ever beat. So uh, Final Fantasy II US slash 4 is my personal favorite, because um, that one resonates so well with me. 
and I love all the characters. Um, but no, I'd say like seven is the the next one down. Um, like it was amazing, and I I played it at a very formative time in my life. Um, yeah, and I think that's the thing. I feel Final Fantasy Seven is a game <coughs> where you will look at it through the lens of what's going on in your own life. Um, that's absolutely been true for me. Oh yeah, no, like. If, if you're having identity issues and figuring out who you are, who boy does Cloud? Yeah, his story... Actually, everybody's story, but Cloud's is, like, right there on the tin. Um, so... God, so, Nero, I was wondering... Because, obviously, you, you don't know a lot about Final Fantasy, um, but from what you have seen, <laughs> um, why do you think it's endured so much? I'm interested in um, outside of you. <laughs> okay, so my my Final Fantasy experience, again, I'll reiterate, is that um, I've played 15, and I loved it. I, I played like for I played it for like 50 hours, and I finished it, and I had a great time with it. I have been told that's likely because I enjoyed it so much because I don't like Final Fantasy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh and that that may be true. It, it feels much more like a Western RPG, and I'm I'm historically someone who prefers Western RPGs to JRPGs. But um, I I think that um, I think the reason that it's the same reason as Ocarina of Time is there's just there's a huge contingent of people that played it at a very formative time in their life. And I'm not I'm not saying that it's less valuable because of that. I'm just saying that like it's it's just I think it's an explanation for why that particular one stuck. Um, I will also say that I think the, um, if I remember correctly, this was the first, um, was it the music that made them have to switch to the PlayStation disc? Right? FMVs. Was, like, FMVs. FMVs more okay. than music, but it music was one well. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was, was the yeah, first there's... one that had full orchestral music. Right, yeah. Um, I, I remember this also being the one that had to switch to the PlayStation. This is likely, uh, and it also being, you know, released in the West, um, with a pretty large release for i think maybe the first game to do so it was in the series it was def it, okay so it didn't it wasn't the first of the series to have a like a tv ad campaign but it did have a pretty sizable one though the the ad campaign was full of bullshit so <laughs> and i i even knew about this game like i saw it in in the you know the game magazines and stuff like that right back yeah. in like 97 was it 97 or 98 uh both, because uh, it in, came in out America. like the tail end. It came out the tail end of '97, so okay, you probably gotcha. saw um, it um, in both. Yeah, and I remember people at school like talking about it and stuff. We just uh, didn't. I don't know. We we never really got into it, but I, I do think it being the first of the series to end up on PlayStation when PlayStation was really exploding was really a big thing. Like, I'm sure a lot of the marketing got tied into it. You know, like oh, coming. You know, your your parents are coming in to get a. Um, uh, PlayStation One, you know, for for Christmas, and like Final Fantasy Seven is the the one that like all the all the kids are getting. Like, it's let's a grab cool this. kids game, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I one of the things that I remember so so much about the uh, the marketing was that they they advertised it like it was a movie, and then the greatest adventure of the year is not coming to a theater near you. It's only Whoa. coming to <laughs> the PlayStation. <laughs> You know. Oh my god! I I didn't know that. That's that's very interesting. <laughs> I don't. I my knowledge of of old uh, game commercials pretty much begins and ends with the the rapping Zelda one. <laughs> the rapping Zelda one is amazing. <laughs> but no, the um the the FF Seven ad campaign. Uh, if I may digress for a moment, has led to mm -hmm. a lot of ridiculous nonsense in in the fandom because people would take the bullshit that was said in those commercials like they were gospel. Um, oh no! That's like reading J.K. Rowling's Twitter and being like, "This is right." Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, all right. Man, okay, it's interesting. So, sorry, did they have like non-canonical stuff happening in the commercials, and like uh, people would well, argue about if it was real? Oh uh, well, one of, specifically one of the things is that the uh, um, it talks about you know a hate that always was, a love that could never be, you know, Ooh. Um, and and other like big grandiose terms, and it also I think spoils Aerith's death, which a <laughs> lot of the marketing does, as does the back of the box. Why? I don't know why people were so like, you can't talk about Aerith's death; it's a spoiler. They spoiled it. They're not very good at hiding it. Sorry, that's another of my rants. Um, that, no, oh, that's this, okay. Yeah, yeah I yeah. Uh, I'm actually curious if like. Uh, 
I, I feel like Final Fantasy traditionally has always, or most of them at least, are sort of a, a coming of age story. I wonder if this one just happened to like be the right like kind of setup for that. Like I, I know again, that's why I read a whole thing actually about that's why Ocarina of Time became such a huge hit because like people at that age, like you started as Kid Link and like you actually had like were forced to grow up to deal with the world changing around you, kind of a thing, and yeah. like. It struck a chord with a lot of people, and I'm, I'm sure that's for good reason. Like, uh, is there anything in this game that you feel like really appeals to like the coming of age thing for like you know eight people, like kids oh, age like you know so eight much. through thirteen, fourteen? Uh, I think well, it's, it's. Oh no, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, it it's not in the, uh until the near end that you realize that Cloud has been at this ever since he was about twelve psychologically mm-hmm. when he made a promise to Tifa that he would become a soldier and become famous so that he could come back as a hero and sweep her off her feet. And he failed at that, and he's been dealing with the psychological repercussions ever since. Huh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, I think there's, there's just so much to it. Um, I always feel like it was... I feel like that bit of it being a coming-of-age thing is intentional, definitely. Um, I feel like there's some unintentional elements, like a lot of people talk about how... Uh, like I said, going back to um, like Aerith here from like a female perspective, I guess. Um, I look at her a bit differently from other character, from other like fans do. Um, I know the general consensus, and I know this is probably right in the back of my head, is that um, she only um is sort of romantically interested in Cloud because of his links to her ex boyfriend Zach. Um, I suppose I looked at it a bit more generously, considering what was happening in my life at the time. Um. And was looking at myself from Eris' perspective and saw her, and I saw her sort of moving on, and then having her moving on cut short by Sephiroth, um, and that being the tragedy of it. And I feel like there was some coming of age elements there. There was also, um, also, I think the, my, I was gonna like get into a point of like what our favorite moments were in the game, um, and one of mine is Cloud's reaction to Eris' death, um, because he spends so much of the first disc, I guess, of the game just shrugging his shoulders at everything, not just literally just going along the flow, almost not even having that much agency himself. And then he just has this massive outburst at Sephiroth um, about how needlessly cruel he is, about, you know, how Aerith's gone. And it it really, like, it's, it's insane how... Um, much of an impact that scene had on me considering they look like they're made of lego and the <laughs> translations aren't perfect but it's there's just something about that that scene that's so powerful um if you're going through something where you sort of uh need that cathartic release so, so it's it's definitely got that element to it yeah spe- speaking of that moment and, and of cloud not having agency there's a very interesting ludo narrative point in that nearly every um, like player optional choice for like answers for Cloud to say stuff to people happens before that death. Whereas after that death, he starts asserting himself. Like you don't get to choose his witty responses; he picks them. Before Aerith's Ooh. death, it's you, the player, story in control. After that, Cloud takes over. That's a very good point. Yes, it, yeah, absolutely. And also, like in the first disc, they're really playing up this like cutesy romance element yeah, between either yeah. him or him or Tifa, um, Aerith or Tifa, and you get choices between them both, and they're very clear which one you're going to be with. And then, depending on the points you've got on each character, you go on a date with one of them. But then that's just completely shut down. Um, after Except the first for disc. one scene. Uh, yes, and there's yes. there's no there's no choices for it after the the uh, the first disc, but there, that value gets referenced one more time throughout the game, and that is and if just... you are if your value with Tifa is above a certain threshold, uh, one scene will pay out slightly more romantically. Yeah, and I just find it really interesting that they it, it's one of the first games I think to sort of subvert genre tropes. Um, I mean, obviously, like killing Aerith at all, killing like the most wholesome character. Um, in, you know, in a game that's like you know medieval fantasy, and then giving her, um, n- not giving the player any way to get her back, but yeah. giving you well, this expansive open world where you think you might be able to get her back. Um, it's is... not the first time that you know Final Fantasy killed off uh, a, a major playable character. Like they did it all the time in two, three, and four, 
and once in five and once in six. The difference is that in every other occasion, it was a heroic sacrifice. In yes, Eric's and case, time, it was it bloody was... fucking murder. And it was needless. Like it was yeah. just so. It was just needless cruelty. And I feel like that sort of. I don't want to get doom and gloom. I know we don't talk about the yeah. outside world in this podcast, but I think in twenty twenty, like seeing that reflected in the video game, like it was really uh, har- harrowing. To, I guess. <laughs> to my um, to my understanding of the of the remake, there uh, there are a bunch of things. There's like a weird thing happening where like. Uh, there are, like, these spirits that are trying to, like, stop the same thing from happening as the first game. No, they're trying Aerith... to ensure that the first thing happens. Oh, okay, sorry. And yeah. Aerith doesn't die, or she does... In well, we're not one? to the I... point in the game where she would. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to get spoilers to the remakes. I have heard yeah. the remake slightly different, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, the, re- the remake oh, okay. ends right after you leave Midgar, so we're not even yeah. to that point. That took me like seven hours in Final Fantasy VII, and the whole game's like forty. How the hell yeah. this going to be? Side like quests. 10 parts? <laughs> uh, some side quests. They're expanding bits, um, like the 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 trip to uh, to and from the reactors has been expanded. There's extra side. Oop. So is the original game uh, open world then? Like after you get out of Midgar? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I I had read that like. They were talking. Square Enix was talking about with the remake, with part two, like, oh yeah, the open world is like hard, like you know, pretty difficult to craft. And I was like, oh, why is that new? But I, I guess not. Yeah, okay. Although I'm sure the open world will look a little different. No. Oh yeah, no, because <laughs> uh, they're probably going to throw in references to some of the cities that we know exist, but just weren't in the original game. Sure. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm gonna skip a few points because we've, we've we've touched on like. Cloud and Tifa and Aerith and Cloud and everything. Um, um, I, I see you've, other... you've uh, failed to include the best ship of all time, Sephiroth X Cactuar, in, in the outline. Actually, I'll go for that one. Um, <laughs> Ex- explain I that love, one to I me. love the Cactuar. Um, <laughs> Why is I, that a thing? <laughs> I, I, I have to also give a shout out because Final Fantasy XV is one of the very few games that had steam workshop support on day one with mods made by the developers uh, oh, that on pc is nice. oh yeah so they the, yeah the developers actually made like a bunch of mods they released on release day with it and one of them was just replacing all of your swords with a giant cactuar which i did immediately <laughs> and i did not turn off for the whole game so like there are all these like you know epic fights and everything and these cutscenes, and like noctis is just swinging this big cactuar just screaming the whole time yeah that sounds right all right, I, I, think I'm... I... Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, everyone played this C- game. Continue, it's good. continue talking about Cactuar, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, anyway, can, go on. <laughs> okay, I think I'll probably do like one more serious point. Um, and uh-huh. Mirab, I'm sorry, this is just spoiler central for you. I hope. Oh, I, I don't okay care. I've, yeah. Oh, thank God. So, um,. I was interested in seeing what you thought of the ending, Tim, because you... Obviously, I played at a time where I could yeah. immediately go online and look at theories or form my own theories, <coughs> um, knowing that, like, there was no Final Fantasy VII 2. I mean, I know that there was, like, additional material made afterwards. Um, but I was wondering, like, back... Because the, the ending, um, just to sort of sum it up for everyone who doesn't know, uh, you defeat Seph- Sephiroth, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. At the center he- of the Earth. At the center of the earth, but in where true, the dinosaurs true... are, yeah, <laughs> in absolute he killed JRPG them all. fashion, he's killed um, them all. So you have to kill him. Um, and uh, Cloud and Tifa like narrowly escape with everyone, um, and then and then Cloud, Cloud gets sucked back into the mindscape where he has to defeat uh, Sephiroth's psychic form. Oh yeah, uh, how did I forget about that? Like thing? Freddy Krueger, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was pretty messed up, wasn't it? Yeah, so he does that. Um, the game ends, and it cuts to, like, in the future, doesn't it? And you see um, Midgar, and it's all, like, completely overgrown. Um, and you see... Uh, Red 13 and his cubs. Red Fer- yeah, um, and it's, like, basically... It, it's like that COVID meme, like, nature is healing sort of thing yeah. <laughs> like uh, nature is taken over Midgar and then the game ends with some children laughing um so that's, <laughs> that's yeah very yeah they, they tee this laugh someone can someone mod it so it's like <laughs> tee this laughing instead <laughs> 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 
So, Tim, like, what was that like completing back in the 90s? Um, I mean, I, I took it as, as a hopeful state to, to say that humanity was still around. You know, they hadn't been wiped out. They were living, you know, more in tune with nature. Um, and I just figured it, you know, it, the entire game was essentially, uh, you know, a Red 13. Let me tell you of the time I saved the world, my children. <laughs> um, but also, like, you know, I thought it was... And there, there's huge debate on what the, the, the nitty gritty of the ending means, like, you know, because it was very badly translated. Holy is having the opposite effect. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and there's there's lines about the promised land and what it is. and um, But no, I, I took it to mean that, um, you know, from the, uh, the iconography, both uh, before that, because... Um, right after he defeats Sephiroth, Cloud is standing around stupefied before a hand shows up and he reaches out for it. And then it turns out to be Tifa's hand. And a lot of people said, no, it was Aerith's hand. And a lot of people thought it was Tifa's hand. And it was both because it was Tifa or it was Aerith leading the dumbass to Tifa. Cause she's like, dude, dude, she's into you. Go, go. Um, and also my, she's alive. Yeah. No, my personal <laughs> thought is that Aerith ships Cloud and Tifa, especially in the remake. <laughs> Um, okay. No, you're crushing my heart. No, I, I oh, no, 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 no. She, she is totally moved on. But she's like, look, dude, that is my best friend, and that is the hot guy my best friend is into. I am going to ship them. You know what? That's fair. You know what? You yeah. go, girl. And nice. I, Aerith's a better person for it. I think. She is. Yeah. Um, um, oh, but anyways, so, so both uh, her leading Cloud back to the real world and her appearing and smiling right before the fade out, I took as signs of Aerith acting as an emissary for the planet to say, it's going to be all right. Just don't screw it up this time. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I as soon as I finished it, I loved that ending. I loved how vague it was. I didn't really want to... I still haven't like dived into any of the other, um, you know, pieces of media. Yeah, Advent Children is a spectacle. Universe. Crisis Core will make you fall in love with Aerith and Zack yes, even more. Yes, I, I know about Crisis Core. Oh, wait, Core I have actually watched Advent Children. <laughs> How, wait, wait, what? Wait, so you didn't play Final Fantasy VII? You didn't know no, anything about it? Um, I did not. But you watched yeah, how Dad was that experience? Children. It was confusing. Um, <laughs> I remember the. I remember distinctly the tiger guy, and then the cat guy was like there. The little cat guy was also yep, there. Catchy, um, catchy. But like, they all showed up for like no explained reason. They were just like, "We're here too," and yeah. Cloud is like, "Awesome." Yeah, and then he just keeps swinging his sword. <laughs> we're your buddies. We're here to give you moral support and our and our. You know, charge up your spirit bomb. I watched this because in college, a my roommate's friend came over and he was like, oh, I don't know why we had, were talking about this movie. And he was like, dude, this is like one of the best movies I've ever seen. I swear. And I was like, are you sure you're not like nostalgic and it doesn't <laughs> hold up? And he's like, no, nah, no, it's going to be really oh, good. God. And I was like, can I watch this with knowing literally nothing about Final Fantasy? He's like, yeah, it's going to be great. And both so of those things like were the wrong. Worst, yeah, he was like the worst human being ever, basically. Yeah, but then like, while, but like halfway through watching the movie, he actually was like, all right, this movie's actually very bad. Yeah, no, I, I, I love uh, Advent Children Complete. Uh, you know, not, not to say that it's a great movie, because it isn't, but even I will like completely cop to, yeah, Advent Children had a lot of problems. And if you're going to watch it, basically watch it for the visual spectacle. Um, it relies way too much on... Uh, like out of movie context, like from novellas in the game, to really get the whole story. Yo, oh, I, oh I yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Um, I also have to give a shout out in that vein to Final Fantasy XV because if you want to play that game properly, what you have to do is um, watch. First of all, uh, start start the start the game, play the first chapter, play, play yeah. the prologue, stop playing the game, watch a two hour movie. Watch a two-hour movie, come back, play the game for several more chapters, stop, go watch all four episodes of the anime, and then continue yeah. playing the game. And people <laughs> criticize Kingdom Hearts. Bloody hell. <laughs> I mean, King Which I did do those things, yeah. by the way. So. Yeah, no, so, so, so did I, and so did Kate. Um, but you also forgot that there's also the various DLCs and the book of the DLCs that never got released. Yes, um, yes. And no, King Kingdom Hearts is also bad about this, mostly because there's so many different entries... And they're all on different systems, or were until very recently. Um, yeah. God, that's a mess. So, like, should I just... Because I'm going to play Crisis Core, but should yeah. I just ignore Advent Children? Oh, no. Watch Advent Children. It's, it's, a, it's a fun spectacle movie. Don't expect 
anything in terms of like complicated plot. Like it's basically <laughs> think of it as Cloud's catharsis session where he just gets to beat the shit out of a lot of people and feel better about himself. Good for him. I'm happy for him. Um I guess to to close off the important question do we stand Kate Sif? It, whatever, however you pronounce it. Ketchy. Wait, say that, that can't again? be true. Ketchy. Was this what? a mistranslation too? Uh, no, Ketchy is how you spell it. Ketchy is how you... Uh, C-A-I-T-E-S-I-T-H is a valid yeah. spelling of Ketchy. It's, it's an old Gaelic. Uh, for, you know, the mischievous cat creature. Oh, old Gaelic. Why didn't I know that? <laughs> what? I know. I say I say that like anybody would know it. But the only reason I, d- I know I it thought is it, I uh, also, and, into... I think until we did our video, I thought his name was Cat Sith, because he's a yeah. cat. Yeah, that's, no, that's that exactly makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? how yeah. I said it in my uh, head which is why when I'll In one game. of my recent playthroughs, I named him Plagueis, because he's the that's cat easier. Sith. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm too amused by that. <laughs> no one ever told you the story of Cats with the Wise. Yes. <laughs> uh, but no, it's not so a story we, we that Shinra will we... tell you. <laughs> can we Reeve call him Cats? certainly would. Actually, no, Reeve would. Reeve loves his catchy form. Uh, or his little <laughs> robot buddy, I should say. But do we stan him? Uh, yes, actually. He's useless as a playable character in the original game, but I love his story. Oh, well, God's sake. See, see uh, I I gathered online, at least from Twitter, I'm not sure how reflective that is of the community, that he is very unpopular because um, of the fact that he was uh, like a spy for a bit and he did threaten Barrett's daughter, which was a bit of a, yes. of a douche move. Um, but he but- had that really poignant moment... Um, you know the one I'm on about. Um, yes. Where, and are, are, holy shit, that got that got to me. So I I, I stand him on this point. Uh, specifically, are you talking about at the pyramid? Yes, the py- Yes, that. Yeah. That. Oh the, god. That is a wonderful piece of narrative, like speaking meta textually, because that's the part where you think the game is making fun of, you know, sacrifices, and it is, but that softens you up because right after that that death happens. Mm. Exactly that. Um, It gives you this, like, false sense of security. And holy shit. It is a um, wonderful move. But, yeah, so, um, I'm glad. I'm glad that we support uh, Katsik on this podcast um, because he seems to get a lot of hate. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I had him on my party a lot um, just because I found it fun to have someone who's bloody attacks are completely random uh, oh yeah that's the thing there Abam. this yeah. is why uh, he is uh, uh, yeah he's like a slot machine attack or yeah something? he can yeah, actually it... lose the game for you uh, <laughs> yeah. by using his limit break which is why a lot of people don't use him yeah you see if you live life on the edge and you're a pro gamer like me um, <laughs> then you will mm-hmm. use him uh, um, mean- meanwhile but... I-, I know the materia system fair enough that I, I automated like 90% of the fights at the end of last my last playthrough because if you go uh, God Hand, All Cut, Flash, uh, Initiative, Tifa will instant kill everything. Uh, it'll well, also work with um, Vincent, because he's also got the perfect accuracy weapon. This is some Yu-Gi-Oh nonsense. <laughs> this is. Like, all I did was use the Cat Boy to use the, the dice. I've, I've, I've launched my, my knight at your flotation ring of your castle, and now it'll crush your <laughs> monsters. Look, if you cast if you cast the knight spell in, in uh, FF7, it will crush your monster. Oh, knights of the round. Also, shout okay. out to my, uh, my uh, indie synthwave album coming out, Crush Your Monster. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, with Sephiroth coming to Smash, what other Final Fantasy VII characters, or just Final Fantasy characters in general, um, uh, some we can include near Ab in this, uh, I think the Cactuar be added... would be a good one. Um, oh my god, yes. Cactuar would be great as a, as a, um, as an assist trophy. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I, I, I think the game needs more fisticuffy people. Yes. So, yeah, Tifa, Tifa, Sabin, yeah. um... Is Barrett's hand a gun? Is that? Am I remembering that? Yeah. He, yeah. Well, technically, it's a gimmick hand and turns into a gun, but six of one. Sure. Um, okay. So, I, I, I would say that if I was picking, I would say like. Uh, also, let's just acknowledge for a moment that 
we all screamed when there was another final fi- or another Fire Emblem character is like, oh, it's another anime sword guy. And then they did another anime sword guy and everyone's <laughs> losing their fucking minds now. Uh, everyone's I mean, so everyone's excited. Was, I, I personally was was delighted to see Byleth and, and the multi-weapon setup. Cause I thought my Byleth fe- was... I was disappointed that we had another Fire Emblem character is all just because there were seven of them already. <laughs> I mean, it is one of the largest roster. Like, you can take the roster of every other Nintendo-owned franchise. Yeah. And it still won't equal half of the Fire Emblem roster. Yeah, there's like 900 Fire Emblem characters. Yes, and it's, almost 400 yeah. of them are ones you'd care about. <laughs> almost? <laughs> anyway, sorry. As far as, like, Final Fantasy characters, I would just vote for anybody who's not going to use a sword. I'd be fine with it. Oh, yeah. Laguna <laughs> nice. would also be amazing, though you would have the, the snake problem of you can't use guns. Um, likewise, uh, Barrett with uh, a non-gun gimmick arm would, would be great. Um, let's see. Actually, let's let's do something crazy. Let's do Tifa and Aerith as an Ice Climbers. <laughs> and you switch between them like, um, like Zelda and Sheik. So, oh. Oh, no, we, we, we can just have them as the ice climbers, uh, but then Aerith's the one where if she dies, it doesn't matter, and Tifa can do it on her own. <laughs> okay, all right. So Rosalina and Luma. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Nerev, I'll let, I'll let you do the last question, the important what? Oh, one. yeah. Are there, are there enough ghosts? I guess Aerith is a ghost, right? Um, uh, yes, actually, end, but not not in not primarily in the game, but she does. In show the up as in a the ghost. remake, though, there are a lot of spirits interacting with everybody, yes. so I think that has enough ghosts. Yes. That's the, probably the what hollows, we want. the shrouds. Yeah, um, there are the actually plenty time? of ghosts in uh, FF Seven. So the entire the first, talk. First time, like we've said, oh, like this game could do with more ghosts, and the developers have already listened. They've listened yeah. to our concerns, and they <laughs> added more ghosts. <laughs> That's Some would true. say they added even too many ghosts, um, which is why wrong. you have to, you know, destroy a lot of them in the game. <laughs> um, they, they have to destroy them to make room for more ghosts. That's the only way there can be too many ghosts, if, if you don't have room for more ghosts. See, this is this should have won the last D's game of the year, because our metric is we like ghosts. Um, <laughs> we should have given an award for, like, number of ghosts, for sure. <laughs> we should have. I'm, I'm, FF7R I'm do... would have won. It would have been a clean sweep. Even even games about ghosts don't have as many ghosts. <laughs> as we get towards the end of the year, I was going to do, like, our own, like, uh, Hall of Fame Luster Award, where we have to just vote on the best Hall of Fame Luster entry, <laughs> but... <laughs> That's going to be interesting, because they it's gonna range be, a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of different kinds of things. Yeah. All right, well, um, let's, uh, I guess we need to move on. We're probably, uh, we're kind of come up on, ton- on time. All right, everybody, welcome uh, to Time for Games. Uh, today we're doing real or fake fantasy. So what I've done is, uh, Tim, how familiar are you with the early Final Fantasies? Very. I've, Very? I've, played, I've played all of them oh, and man. several of the right. remakes. So I, I, will, hoping... I will hold off. I will let Reguess okay. first. If, yeah, I'll let, let Reguess first. Uh, so what oh, I've done boy. here is I've gone back through the first six Final Fantasies and I've gathered uh, some fake sounding real characters and some real sounding <laughs> fake characters that I made. Um, and uh, just tell me, we're going to just see if we can suss out which are the real ones here. So I'm just going to tell you a name and you tell me if this character is real or not. Um, okay. All right, go go the mimic. <laughs> I'm gonna go for real. That one is real. It, it, that one is real. You're correct. Um, oh how my about god! What game's Pri- that? I want. I want to play that. <laughs> nice. How about Princess Tycoon? Princess Tycoon? No, that, 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 fake, fake. There's two of them. That one is real. Yeah. Um, oh. there's, there's actually. Two yeah. Not not only is tycoon. it not fake, there are two of them. <laughs> yeah, Lynn and Ferris Tycoon. Like, so capitalism <laughs> isn't. Well, why am I saying capitalism in Final Fantasy? That's literally the plot of Final Fantasy VII. I'm stupid. All right, how are you feeling about Blitz Kaiser? <laughs> fake. It's gotta be fake. That is a fake one, but it's there very is, it close. Is, it's, it's very, very close. close to it's similar to a, what was the real character's name? Uh, well, there's Butts Kaiser. Butts Kaiser. Thank you. Butts Kaiser. <laughs> which that which sounds faker? I know. Yeah. Is the real one. <laughs> It's technically okay. Bots Kaiser, but it got butts for the first time. Yeah. How about how about this one? Mark Kosh of Mycidia. 
<laughs> real? That sounds bonkers enough to be real. No, that's a fake one I made. Oh. My city is <laughs> real. <laughs> city is real. Two, My city is a real games. place. Um, no, nah, it's not a real. Sorry, it's not a real place. It's yeah, a fake place. It's a real, real Final place. Fantasy location <laughs> yeah. that's been in two games. Um, Edward Chris Conmuir, Prince of Damsion. That that would be a lot for you to make up, and I know you did this. But wouldn't I today. do that though? Um, <laughs> fake, gotta be fake. No, no, no real. real. Sorry, I meant real. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's a real one. I, okay. I was. Yeah, yeah he, I meant to he, say he's real. He's also known I, as uh, Edward the Spoony Bard. Yeah, I, I was I was dancing around between like idiot bard or Prince of Dumpsia. Um, Por que no are, los we dos? Sure, are we sure? Like, I, I'm I'm convinced that Final Fantasy actually started on seven, and it's just this joke <laughs> that I'm not in on. Um, <laughs> it it okay, is a joke. They made six games uh, to yes. pretend like they existed. No. How do you feel about Richard Highwind, the Last Dragoon? <sighs> I feel like he's real. He's real. He is real. Yeah. You it's actually Rickard, I think. But is that might Rickard? just be a trans- I think, I, think yeah. I saw Richard. It, maybe it's a I, translation it, might, thing. it might be a translation thing. Um, Alright. How about Armano Kryle, the wind song? <laughs> fake, I think. He is fake. You got him. Hey. That was mine. Kryle is real, but not, not Armano Kryle. Yes. Uh, Armano is, I think, one of the names of the artist from Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> That's um, Amano. Amano. No, okay. I was just Amano. like pulling random words off the wiki, <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> <laughs> assembling them. Uh, how about Peldon Kane of Highwood? Highwood sounds like it could be a medieval fantasy name. This, yeah, I'm gonna say it's real. That's a fake one. Yeah. <laughs> there is a Kane, um, but he's not Peldon. He's Kane. Uh, well, well, it, that might be on the list. <laughs> Um, this is my right, fault for have... trying to apply logic to this. <laughs> yeah, now we have Mog of the Narsh Mines. <laughs> what? No, real. Um, um, that sounds crazy. Real. That is real. That is very crazy. Yes. <laughs> he's is, he is one of the main characters of Six. And was uh, used to promote it. In a very weird commercial where he was just yeah. zapping this, monsters. He had them in for an exist. edition and he's zapping them into the cart. They don't All right. it, guys. It's been very funny, but... Come on, the jig's up. These games aren't real. <laughs> I have one more. Um, I have one more. Kazus the Jin. Say that again? Kazus the Jin. The Jin. Yeah, D-J-I-N-N. Oh, I thought it was like Jin as in like <laughs> G-I-N. <Jesus>. Um, <laughs> fake. That is fake. Oh, I felt good hey. about that one, though. I'm surprised yeah, you got it. that was a him. good one. That was a good Wait, one. Wait, how is that one fake? Did you... Because Ka- there is Kazus the Jin from Final Fantasy 3. What? Oh, yeah. no. K-A-Z-U-S Did you, did you accidentally invent... K-A-Z-U-S? <laughs> yeah. I made, I made him. <laughs> you accidentally invented an existing <laughs> character. Wait, wait, sorry. Kazus is the name of a town in Final Fantasy 3. Okay, sorry. I'm... And well, I'm sure what I've done. I'm fu- sure yeah. what I did was I saw that while scrolling through the yeah. wiki and just grabbed it. Yeah. Okay. It, it, was- <laughs> it was a town that was cursed by the jinn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> you, but by accident, you got so very close to real by you getting a real name and a real creature that you fight in that town. Yes. So it's the jinn of Kazus is real. Okay. I don't got think it. I could ever play a Final Fantasy game ever again after this podcast. My that was our hurts. goal. <laughs> you've had enough of us talking about it in the yeah. in, in the discord you just want to ruin it for us um all right so yeah we are uh let, let's close out here um so I, I wanted to talk quickly what are what are people wanting from final fantasy 16 like i said 15 is the only one i've really played um so i have some thoughts i guess but i mean <coughs> I, I, i've heard from a lot of people that they want to kind of Return to the older, you know, style of games, obviously. What are you guys thinking? Uh, well, we're definitely not returning to the old style of gameplay. Uh, oh, yeah, we for are, sure. We are is, definitely is, yeah. looking a lot more like... So visually, Final Fantasy sixteen reminds me so, so much of Final Fantasy III. Um, especially the remake. What with the, Now, is that um, 3 as it was released in the US, or is that 3 no, that's secretly 4? 3D... No, Three that's secretly six is the one you're oh, thinking no. of. Two oh, is secretly four. God. So three J has character designs, especially in the remake, very reminiscent in an SD form 
of 16. So I think they're going to be talking about mm-hmm. the balance of light and dark again. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, just for a quick note, it is uh it is a live combat game. Uh, it's actually they brought on the uh um some people from Capcom uh to do the combat and they wanted to replicate the combat from Devil May Cry 5, so it's supposed to feel very similar. So it's so. Final Fantasy 16 featuring the combat from Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> <laughs> featuring combat from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> That's very good. I'll put. Th- I'll make sure to put the sticker on the the picture. <laughs> Isn't that yes. like the second week running that's been on the the thumbnail? I swear we've already had that on the thumbnail. It's been um, in there before. I don't remember it, when it, though. Not only that, but it was also in Kate's top ten this week. Oh, yeah. And that's oh, also my fault. Even come to think By the way, what ga- what game was that? It was originally on. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Two Nocturne, uh, the European version. Shin Megami Tensei Two was Nocturne, or Three is Nocturne. Uh, because the re- remaster that's coming out, 3 is Nocturne. Um, it might, might be 3, hold on. Or was that another Japanese Western confusion <laughs> number on. thing? Uh, I, I... No, it was 3 Nocturne. Okay. Um, um, r- regardless, so yeah, what, yeah what, are your, that, what are your thoughts, Tim, as a big fan? What do you want to see? Um, I, I would love to see more on the the way that the like different interpretations of the of the uh, the eidolons of the summons especially whether or not they're gods because sometimes they are sometimes they're they're not mm-hmm. um <clears throat> I, i'm curious to see where the political intrigue goes because that reminds me a bit of tactics like not in in um details but in tone so i'm curious to see what political machinations there are and if we might have a hand in them okay um yeah and I'd uh, love is to your see character of... a prince again for this is that what I understood? I think technically yes, but I think it's, doesn't like, he have an incredibly dumb name? Yeah. From what is from it? What we know. I don't remember. Let me. It's like let me, let me let me just look. Yeah. His name is Clive. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, it, it's it's so Clive Rossfield. Yes, the firstborn son Clive? of the Archduke of Rosaria. Yeah. Clive Rossfield. That Clive sounds... Rossfield is Clive Rossfield is my is my barber. I don't know what this. <laughs> I mean, that sounds it, it, exactly it, it, like a Japanese writer coming up for Western name. It's well, like I mean, the thing, the thing it's is, like there's the actually a lot cast. of like, oh yeah, they've got a totally normal name because like there was Cecil and uh, you know um, Bart. I think was the original intention behind Bart. Butts. And oh my God. Tara Branford was originally Tina. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Cloud was originally meant to be Claude, but Ooh. enough on that. And then we just go off into the weeds. Okay. Clivey, how? Um, I, I guess more Clive is what I want. Um. Yeah. More Clive. Um, we're gonna I get like, a lot of, we're wait, gonna get a whole game of Clive. I can't think of another game that, um, is led by someone called Clive. Uh. Clive's, Clive's Quest? <laughs> <laughs> For the, uh, Atari? 2600 Clive's Quest um, adventure nice. game. Yeah, where's the Clive's uh, Quest fandom at? Came out in 2010. Weirdly enough, very late. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh, by the way, this is maybe a good time to shout that, um, and so I don't forget that for um, our Christmas episode, we will again. Uh, I think maybe we'll make it a holiday special. We're, we're going to, again, be doing a, a thing where we try to make some video games from uh, from uh, fan suggestions. So oh, if you guys want to... St- yeah, it went, went really well last time, uh, if you'll remember what yoga class. Um, <laughs> I don't want to. Featuring the Great Horn Owl. Um, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably be taking a crack at another one of those. And uh, I don't think we're going to try to keep it Christmas-themed this time. But if anyone... Yeah, well, I'll, I'll put out some more calls for that in, in next week as well. But, uh, yeah, if you guys want to start sending those in, we'll, we'd appreciate it. Um, okay, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> thank you to uh, to Todd Howard for um, for playing Final Fantasy VII and looking at that kind of game and saying, no, thanks. Um, <laughs> um Je- I, and I, I, I know I'm making a joke, but like I, I almost genuinely mean that because like like I said, like I personally am, have found like I love Western RPGs and I'm not like so hot on JRPGs usually. So, um, like uh, yeah, but uh, obviously there's obvi- and obviously like on the internet I'm extremely unpopular. <laughs> um, 
But, um, yeah, so uh, you can find us at GameLuster.com. Um, hey, our YouTube channel's popping off. Uh, come find us at YouTube.com slash GameLuster. We got, uh, thank you, everybody, by the way. We got 100 subscribers in the last, I think, seven or eight days. So uh, that was that's really incredible. Th- thank you, guys, uh, who's, whoever's out there. And we're getting a lot more views recently just on every video consistently. So I'm... <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm really proud of all of us here for, like, working so hard to, like, build up, like, a, you know, and organically build, like, a, a fan base just by putting out quality content at, like, in, like, a timely way, you know? So, yeah, it's, uh, shout, it's shout out to so everybody well here for that. Yeah, and I just wanted to say that as well, actually. Game Luster as a whole, like, even the website has grown so much in 2020. So, I mean, first of all, massive thank you to all of our lovely contributors. You're all amazing. You're all doing so well. Um, but also thank you to everyone who clicks on our articles, clicks on our videos, um, and is allowing us to keep doing these dumb things that we enjoy doing. So thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Video games. That's my, that's sort of my take on it. Um, we, we like those games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure to find us on whatever podcast store you're using, Apple or Google or whatever, and Give us a give us a good rating if you like us, and and if you don't, uh, the name of our podcast is the Joe Rogan Show. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, make sure to follow us on Twitter at GameBusters Pod. Uh, we do some giveaways too, so uh, check us out for that. And uh, oh, the Lusties, um, we did our Game of the Year awards uh, for Game Luster, and they came out quite nicely. So you can check that out on YouTube, and uh, you can see the real Game of the Year awards starting yeah. the real Jeff Keeley, which is me. Um, yeah, and you might be less mad at our ones because I think I, I think are ours are with the game awards. ours are probably like going to be more popular widely. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Our, definitely. Our no, you, but people are going to have to uh, you know play a, 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 an eighty hour RPG to understand one of our winners. Mm-hmm. Eighty <laughs> hours is really gracious. <laughs> yeah. It's a hundred eighty hour hours is game. if you're very quick. Oh yeah, no. yeah. We we logged up about hundred and twenty hours total. I'm thinking of just to get to the part where you learn who the antagonist is i need to find out like yeah like i said persona 5 is one of my favorite games of all time but like i'm not really ready to commit another hundred hours to playing it again for royal um but like when i'm thinking like maybe next year or the year after when i do come back to it just for like nostalgia's sake i'll, I'll play royal on that no, should... definitely play royal yeah. there's so many quality of life improvements nice nice um okay so any plugs tim uh i mean there's you know um console tours and Introduction to Plumbing, both of which we need to get back on. We've kind of been uh, letting them slide because real life has been a bit busy. Um, and, you know, just keep watching and keep reading my stuff. But more importantly, keep reading Kate's articles. Because Kate does okay. most of the work at uh, Game Luster. I'm just here to make videos and talk s- stupid stuff on uh, the podcast. And do the yeah. occasional review and article, whatever. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, uh, Re. Um, yeah, check out the Lusties. Uh, Nirav did a very good job of um, both the nomination videos and the announcement that went up yesterday. Um, and um, check out GameMaster.com because I'm hoping that we can get some like end of year articles going. Um, it's been a bloody very busy year for everyone at Game, Game Master, so yeah. we're sort of settling but- down now. We've, we all deserve a break. Um, it would be nice to not look at WordPress for like one day. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I'm hoping we can get some like sort of uh, reflective pieces out. Um, maybe I think one idea that I'm floating around is the most important game we played in 2020. So one not necessarily released this year, but one we played this year that's just helped. Um, incidentally, mine is Final Fantasy VII. So check that out. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to write about that. Like, I, I remember, like, at the very beginning of the uh, of the pandemic uh, lockdown stuff in like March, I retreated into the uh, Xbox Game Pass world of Sunset Overdrive, and that really helped me just like fucking blow some guys, blow some juiced up boys away. I've been considering <laughs> buying that the next time it goes on sale. Have you have you it, played it, it before? No. It is a I, is a super fun, very mindless <laughs> explosion oh yeah, no. game. Uh, it's very I good. think when it came out, um, I like it was Xbox only, and I had a PlayStation, and mm-hmm. I was playing Infamous, and I wanted to see what the other side got, but it looked <laughs> fun. Um. All right. Great. So. Uh. Yeah. Um. I guess last word for our our winner. Um. I have. Um. I, I'm kind of gonna reshape how we do this at the end here. What I'm thinking is that. Uh. So, 
uh, Tim, yeah, you did. Uh, you did win with the Gundam at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Sorry, the uh, the at, the Astray Red Frame Powered Red with 150 Gerber straight. Yes. Um, and if you could just jump on on his back and uh, ride him out, what I need you to do is there. Like, I think we're gonna kind of stick with this now. Um, to break us out of this podcast and free us from this prison, <laughs> uh, there is a there is an incantation or a passphrase that only you know, and you're going to say it to get us out. So please take it away. Well, then obviously we have to say the, the most meaningful and thoughtful thing, the entire most thoughtful line in all of Final Fantasy VII, this guy are sick. <laughs> <laughs>